So I just had a lot of pizza. Uh, and it, it got me thinking about this video. I couldn't find the video, but I will... It was a news report where they share a video from TikTok. I'm just going to play that TikTok video. And then explain the thing that annoyed me about the news report of it. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? How would they know? How would they know? I'm hoping that's not what happened to my pizza. And that's, that's not the reason why. I'm sharing this after eating pizza. It's just that me eating the pizza reminded me of this. But some news channel was reporting it, like an actual like CBS News or whatever. Um, and the guy that was reporting it was talking about the video and he said, It starts off with a guy saying they're gonna know. And then another guy says they're not going to know. How would they know? As if the people filming the video are saying that. No, you dumbass reporter who didn't do your research. It's actually an audio clip that is commonly used on TikTok videos. Only part two is gaming's most evil protagonist. A reader accuses Naughty Dog of being too sympathetic towards the protagonist of The Last of Us 2 and the crime she commits. Well, here's the thing. <coughs> um... Sorry, just me coughing there blanked me, uh, my memory. The thing is that crimes don't really exist in Last of Us because there are no cops to enforce them because it's, it's the apocalypse. Like, you probably... <laughs> your only experience with uh, apocalyptic stuff is the first episode of The Walking Dead where... <laughs> Rick at arrests, or you know, he handcuffs Merle, uh, for saying the N word, basically. 
I know I'm skipping over a bit of context, but you get the point. She hasn't committed any crimes because she wasn't even born in the normal world. Like, she was 14, 20 years after the apocalypse hit. Um, so, since it's the apocalypse, morals go out of the window. One thing I find profoundly sad about the times we live in is that people constantly dismiss Superman as boring and unrelatable because he has a strict moral compass. Well, Superman is quite boring, to be honest. I'm a big Superman fan, but he is boring. Um, That's why you need to constantly reboot it. Like, first two Superman movies were great. I haven't seen the Supergirl movie, Superman 3 or Superman 4. I don't want to. <laughs> They're considered some of the worst movies to ever exist. Um, so I don't want to put myself through that. Uh, Superman Returns. People say it wasn't that good. I liked it. Although I only really remember the bit with the airplane and the Superman is gonna run. But uh, Man of Steel. Great. Um... I don't count Batman v Superman as Man of Steel 2. <laughs> so, to me, Man of Steel was the last Superman movie, and then there's also TV, Smallville, The Arrowverse, etc. So that's, what, five different... In in I was going to say incarcerations, but I don't think that's the right word. Five different people doing Superman, five different universes, although they do crossover. <clears throat> that is what keeps Superman fresh. Despite the fact that like Man of Steel has a similar plot to Superman 2. Yeah, I think, I think it's Superman 2. Because Sod is the bad guy in both of them. <laughs> but it's modernized so that it is it keeps its originality. Because there's like a 33 year difference between them. <laughs> His most recent movie, appearances portray him as a sombre, or sombre, I don't know how you pronounce that word, conflicted character who sees helping other people as a burden and is only one bad day away from being a tyrannical psychopath. <laughs> well, that's just Zack Snyder being Zack Snyder, being dark, um, because he likes to be an edgy boy, which. Mostly does not work out. So it's just because that Zack Snyder's been doing it for the past eight years is why that is happening. But I mean, Henry Cavill's on the verge of being kicked out because they want a black man. And I think they might have already cast Michael B. Jordan as Superman. <laughs> So, as long as Zack Snyder isn't writing it, then maybe it should be lighter. Anyway, the idea of someone dedicating themselves to helping other people is apparently seen as too unbelievable, and I think that says a lot about us as a culture right now. Also, because I feel like it is true that it is unrealistic to have someone who is 100% a good person. <clears throat> Also, uh, Batman is more interesting than Superman because Batman sort of has that conflict to him. Like, if you keep a character... Right, I was actually... There was actually an article by Game of Thrones on this where uh, some feminist was talking about how she doesn't like how basically all the female characters in Game of Thrones are written as possibly bad people. You know, people who aren't 100% good. That's only because they're giving them actual character instead of just being, you know, someone in the background, I guess. This brings me to the subject I want to talk about today, Ellie from Last of Us Part 2. 
specifically a sequel because her characterization in the original makes perfect sense given the situation as she's portrayed as a fundamentally good person who just like Superman ready to sacrifice herself to help others. I don't really have a comment on that. I don't really remember Ellie and Last Was One because my hatred for Last Was Two sort of overshadows my love for Last Was One. <clears throat> in the sequel, though, she already starts off better and angry. Well, she was better and angry for the entire duration of the first game. <laughs> for reasons that are revealed much later on. Despite the fact she has a girlfriend and has found a safe, stable community to be a part of. I'm not going to spoil anything about the game. Despite the fact is a year old. But there's something that happens quite early on as just used as a justification for her becoming even angrier. Oh, for Christ's sakes. So this is... I, I'm gonna say you're a fan. You you love the Last of Us two. Um, but now you love it so much that <laughs> you love it so much that you're actually turning against it. Like you know that. Typically, all those people that go, oh, don't be racist, have racist tweets and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's like that. So, my short where I said, like, uh, Last of Us 2 fans switching up their narratives to enjoy liking, to justify liking crap, I was right. <clears throat> One of the trigger events happens. Uh, once the trigger event happens, Ellie immediately sets out in a 30 hour. Last two is an unnecessarily long game. Rampage of revenge, where she abandons any sense of moral integrity. That it, this is something that is completely accepted by everyone around her, including her pregnant girlfriend, none of who try to stop her. And most of you actually try to help her, even though the mission she's on is incredibly dangerous and would clarify never. Sorry, why does it clarify? Clearly, never be embarked on in reality. Because this is a video game, nobody tries to talk sense into her in any serious fashion. What's worse, though, is that nobody tries to understand why the target of her vengeance did what she did, or indeed what the whole incident was about, even though there were several notes in the game where it would have been easy to find out. Worse, it's obvious to you as a player that the motivations of Ellie's enemies are perfectly justified, or at least far more so than Ellie's. Well... I'd say that the justification for them are equal. <clears throat> like, the reason why they want to kill Ellie is because Joel killed the doctor. Like, the reason why Abby wants to kill Ellie is because Joel killed Abby's dad. And the reason why Ellie wants to kill Abby is because Abby killed Joel. So it's a circle of justification. It's it's equal. <clears throat> and this just further proves that you're a Last was 2 fan because you're siding with Abby. You say that's unnecessarily long. What you mean is that you didn't want to play the prologue. You didn't want to play Ellie Part 1. You didn't want to play Ellie... Sorry, not Part Day. You didn't want to play Ellie Part 2. You didn't want to play Ellie Part Day 3. You immediately wanted to go to Abbey day one, day two, day three. Also, they they do try and like tone Ellie back, but it was just very crap. Like, if what you were saying in this article is correct, then Abby would have killed Ellie. Or sorry, Ellie would have killed Abby at the end of the game. But no. Ellie gets extremely close to killing Abby to the point where Abby just gives up. Then Ellie goes, ah, no, go on, never see me again. <clears throat> and they all lived happily together. <clears throat> I I'm actually sort of enjoying this article because hopefully more of Last of Us 2 fans start to realize how crap the game is and then their love. Because they love it so much, they actually begin to hate it.
Ellie murders and tortures her way through almost the entire cast of characters, killing not only without remorse, but with a hypocritical in in insistence that she and her camp are the good guys, and uh, it's the others that are the morally corrupt ones. Once again, no. Any sense of that happening is because Ellie is the protagonist, but you also play as Abby too. Doesn't matter, Ellie is the main protagonist. <clears throat> Also, well, as I said already, it's a circle of revenge. Abby wants revenge on Joel. Ellie wants... Abby wants to kill Joel. Ellie wants to kill Abby because Abby killed Joel. So... Now there are some obvious real world real world parallels here. Naughty Dog has said that the game is partially inspired by the Israeli Palestinian conflict. BS. But it's not specific to, to that and works as an allegory for any long running feud where both sides have long since lost a moral high ground. I get that, but it doesn't work, at least not in terms of Ellie. It doesn't work because you're supposed to like Ellie. The game clearly does, uh, does, and although you sense that Naughty Dog's writers are trying to be even-handed, they obviously like Ellie too much as a character, despite her actions and position being completely indefensible. No doubt because many also worked on the first game. Kratos from God of War, another Sony game, oddly, is often described as the most evil anti-hero in gaming, but his character in early PS2 and 3 games was so thinly written and meant as an obvious power fantasy for teenage boys, it's hard to take him seriously which is what made the PS4 game so impressive, as it deconstructed the character and made him react to the terrible things he'd done. I don't have a comment because I didn't play 1 and 2, I tried to play 3 and gave up. I own and currently have downloaded 4, but I've yet to play it because I'm busy with Mass Effect. Ellie's completely diff different though. Her games are... <coughs> Much more grounded, and she and her other hum other supporting characters act like actual human beings, which Kratos literally isn't. Even within the context of surviving a zombie apocalypse and having Joel as a father figure, there's nothing to justify her selfishness and complete lack of empathy. Oh, for God's sake. Joel's influence as a bad person is often cited as an excuse for Ellie being as bad as she is, and yet he is not shown to do anything nearly as vindictive as Ellie. Well, I mean, Joel was a father figure to Ellie. That's why she said. That's why she set out for revenge. You just really don't understand Last of Us. I feel like this person didn't play the first game. Also, didn't play the second game, but just is that Nathan Fillion? Sorry, I thought I saw Nathan Fillion on the show I'm watching now. Uh, it turns out it's not. Anyway. What was the Oh, you didn't... You also didn't play Last of Us 2. But you just looked it up on... You know, looked up... Some... Gameplay video on YouTube, probably. Jack Spastaguy. Sorry. Sean Spastaguy. Or something. You know, like, someone like that. And always talks about the things he has done as a as a regrettable necessity. See, the only reason why that happens in the first game, but not the second, is because the first game was actually really was one of the best writing ever, and the second one is total crap. That's why. I suspect this was the point Naughty Dog was trying to make, but it also becomes muddled in the overlong screenplay and far too sympathetic characterization. The unfortunate thing is that in other aspects, The Last was treated as very well in showing two sides of a conflict and having you controlling and interacting with characters from both sides. If there is some attempt to redeem Ellie in the third game, I will despair. Right, you say it as if the third game is a definite. I really do not want a third game. I feel, I feel like Naughty Dog has been compromised. We need to kick Neil Druckmann out of Naughty Dog and get someone better in. 
I don't care who, as long as it's someone better. Right? Not, I don't care. I, like, I want someone better than Neil. Uh, what was that? Ah. Just because you like the character in the first game doesn't mean you can still treat her as a spunky, like, little teenager and that more... Oh, sorry, in the sequels, after what she's done. And I'm saying that more to Naughty Dog than I am to anyone else, because I don't think they realize there's so much damage they've done with the portrayal of such an irredeemable monster. I am ashamed of the fact that I had to defend The Last of Us 2. Especially of how bad a game it is. Like, I'm defending the game from its own fan base. Like, Last of Us 2 was, what, 15 months ago? Let's let it go. The fans won, regrettably. And despite the fact that now the fans are turning on it, you know, they're not going to take away the Game of the Year award for it. They're not going to take away the 10 out of 10 and 93% for it. Well, actually, they might do that, probably, hopefully. But they're definitely not going to take away the Game of the Year award. Like, that reminds me. What games to come out this year? What's going to be this year's Game of the Year? Hmm. Maybe we could get Ghost of Tsushima because we have the Director's Cut come out. Maybe Death Stranding because we have the Director's Cut coming out. Or maybe it already is out. Uh, I can't think, right. You can't just give a good game the Game of the Year award. There has to be something special. And I don't think anything special has come out this year. This is Discord on <laughs> Saturday. I'm saying on as of Saturday, the 18th of September, 2021. That's it. That's all there is. Posted in NSFW memes. This is Twitter as of same time. Why am I not getting... So, guys, we're not doing trending topics anymore. Although, that's a good thing, because we'll, put, we'll save time, even if it's only a couple of seconds. Another thing that we'll save time is not doing data, because... I mean, it's been four months and eight days. He's not coming back. One of the easiest ways to benefit yourself from denying resources to your enemies is simply not to drink soda. Ah, uh, good booster shots aren't being done. This is my fork, I hope you like it. I've read your comics for a long time, and they've made me laugh on multiple occasions. Frick, I hope you see us, haha. <laughs> I'm not, I don't do Spanish. What's it called? Like, flirt? If you're flirt, what you're doing versus what you should be doing. I've interacted with, like, I've interacted with a few right-wing internet personalities behind the scenes asking me to do debates and whatever. And it's always striking how polite and business-like they are. This is not a compliment. I've had perfectly friendly emails from people who are on air, on air screaming about the left-leading society, the gen genocide and catastrophe. Then off air, it's all sorry, but are you just clicking? Creeps. All for a show. Be disrespectful to people who hate you. Should have been less than 24 hours. Why has he tweeted that much? Right, okay. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> Just had a mate text me. Marcus is in the Angus take. I saw her doing a Primata steak. Quartering have a word with Marcus. Tourist doesn't know Angus is in London equivalent. Taking a day at the Arby's. I've not even left the house today. While well, you're up. 
You can get USB cable stuck in penis in backfired attempt to measure length. This brings in new meaning to the term fucking. Man, if only they invented several different methods by which you can measure your penis that doesn't involve ramming things inside it. But I don't think they invented that. If you just like get a roller. Maybe a measuring tape will be more accurate because it, it bends. Pentagon admits Kabul drone strike was a tragic mistake after killing 10 civilians and no terrorists. But America is back! No, come on, just hit like, for God's sake. There we go. Take my notch, post it, the phone numbers to reporters to your Instagram story. Inviting spam calls and threats. Hundreds of protesters shouting sack Dan Andrews have gathered in Melbourne to stage an illegal freedom rally as police close ranks to shut down the anti-lockdown antics. Illegal freedom rally. It was illegal. They didn't have the paper signed to have a protest. They also assaulted cops, didn't wear masks, gripped up and blocked traffic. Pretty illegal, my guy. Don't go supporting these morons. This protest doesn't have the government's permission. Then once you have that, you will need to fill out a fire safety F67A form and have a co-sign by every firefighter in the country. Here's a list of all the forms you can fill out and there's a $500 admission fee per form. We will get back to you with our rejection, I mean our response, some point within the next 6 to 12 months. Next mad last been demonetized and it's Perfectly honest. And to be perfectly honest, yeah, fair. Even has this on it, LMA. Fall content is identified by the YouTube community as inappropriate or offensive to some audiences. I haven't seen that in a while because usually it's just this content is very restricted. Show me your passport. But they don't let you show your passport. It's for your own good, madam. So, welcome to Nostalgia. Um, this is another hidden block guy who. Uh, he's the one I watched the most. Uh, the last time I watched his videos was like 2018, I think. Uh, maybe 17. Because, like, I play. I played Uncharted. Uh,. No, wait. Never mind. So, this all like animated thing. It, uh. I think Bad Van Calendar was like the last time I watched any of his videos. Possibly. Uh. No, I don't remember him doing Red Dead 2. Our Assassin's Creed Odyssey? I mean, we're going back three years here, so what the hell? Same Far Cry 5, the same as Far Cry 4. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, This... The thing with me, he seems to... I haven't seen any of his videos, but he... I would assume... Just from these titling, well, it's just him conforming to the modern title style you need to copy if you want to get big, which she isn't really. <clears throat> uh, and also the thumbnails, which, same thing. Uh, because he would constantly talk about how he's improving his content, but to me, it's devolving, it's getting worse. Like, it was good. Around here, roughly. So I don't have a lot of time. I'm gonna pick the shortest video. I'll do this one. 
Yeah, that's a thing about him. He is very cringe. Uh, I don't like to call it an intro, but not a, I can't think of a better word for it. Uh, because I short as I'm just going to call it title card, which once again, I don't want to call it that. Um, but and also, I, I sort of didn't want to watch this guy's content for a while because of his, uh, his, his thumbnails with the bloody animated bit, but then they got sort of worse and worse because eventually he, he gets a mohawk. <laughs> But then he grows out his like massive hair. Uh, he just keeps on changing it. So he does like sort of he will upload all his videos into one video. Uh calling them a season, but really what it is is a sort of certain phase. Like this is phase one. Phase 2 is when his thumbnails start to shift to this, etc. Okay, I should probably do one of each uh, type of video. Uh, so he is categories, which is just him doing standard reviews. Uh, category perspectives, where he does a review for a trilogy. Broken up in three parts, which is what I'm doing here. This is the Crash Bandicoot retrospective, which also has its own uh, cringe intro title card, whatever. Uh, and there's also top tens, but that's that's just a top ten list. Uh, current cookies, which is just a short review, it's a fast one, but he does it as a sort of persona. Which is what that brutalness thing was, but it wasn't a persona, it was just quick. Um, so I'm not gonna do a standard brutalness video. Uh, I should have just done a standard and not a lightning round. Um, there was also one called Drive Free Review, which is just a current quickie, but even faster. There was also today's special, which was a sort a more uh in-depth review of a recently released game, but he only did one of those for Resident Evil 6, which he called good, or decent at least. Um, yeah. By the way, at this point, this guy's only 18. He's born in 1994, and this, this video came out in 2012. I didn't know he was that young. Well, I've known for a little bit now that he was born in 1994, but I didn't know when I first watched this video. By the way, I have never played Crash Bandicoot. I have played the, the remaster on PS4, but I don't think I beat any of them because I wanted to get 100%, and because it was too hard for me to get 100%, I just gave up. I don't think I will ever go back. Also, I had the game on disc and I sold it. So he does these sort of fun fact bits on the retrospectives. Where he does a sort of broad that's the only word I can think of to describe it, broad accent. Alright, calm down. It's only about a couple of minutes since the, not even a couple of minutes since the last fun fact. Uh, of course, 5%. Um, before I go, 18 years old. Also, neck beard, kind of, well. Mm. Can't really see his, his uh, upper neck, 